and what no what no this that boy Jules. hey man catch me on the ugly money podcast that the cat that land holla at your guava Jules. What up, what up, what up? I am Ugly Money Nietzsche, and welcome to yet another episode of the Ugly Money Podcast. I'm a special guest of the evening, ladies and gentlemen, legendary in his own right. One-fourth of the franchise, boys, West Side Atlanta's own Jizzle Man. What, no, what, no, on that boy Jizzle, no, no, but what, no, what, no. What's up, my brother? How you, bro? I appreciate you making the time to come, come holler at this man here. Yeah. You know, your, your busy schedule. I appreciate you having me in your busy right, schedule. You know, we, we just trying to get like something. Yeah, oh, man, please, man. You're trying to buy the other building. I see. I talked to the dude outside, man. I... <laughs> so, you know, you know, the question everybody want to know is who was Jizzle before Jizzle? Was Jizzle? Um, mm. What do you mean? Like, before I was just like, as my childhood? Yeah, like, as, yeah, like, 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 I was a troubled child. I was in trouble. I was in the streets. Like... Mm. I was wild and profiling, but I was still rhyming. Like, that was something I've been doing. Like, I've been in the streets since I was nine years old. I've been okay. rapping since I was nine years old. I've been smoking weed since I was nine years old. I've been fishing since I was nine years old. I've been playing with guns since I was nine years old, brother. I don't know if I need to meet nine-year-old Jizz. God damn it. Like, he needs ass whooping. But, but I don't think you can whoop that little nigga. I know, because I was giving him out. <laughs> <laughs> since he was nine years old. Now, um, I mean, everybody, of course, knows the, the success you guys have had as, 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 as the franchise boys. Correct, correct. You know, uh, in those early days, before the franchise years, how did Jizzle find out who he was as an artist? Um, Through through cats like Hitman, Sammy Sam, and my brother Thug, dog, he was signed to Big Cat back in the day, mm-hmm. Big Cat Ruckers. Like, and there was a lot of influence on it. Like, a lot of people didn't know, like, some of my style came from Sammy Sam. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that stage of being able to be in t- contact with them people and then rest repeat my big brother Logan, I was able to be with the OGs and the boss thug rich niggas in the hood because, I'm, you know, I'm me and I'm with them and I'm able to get in the club and rap when these people are at the club, Kilo and... Sammy Sam and these type people, I'm knowing these people at a young age and they knowing the style. I knew Mook B back there. I knew Mook B before the group knew Mook B. God damn Mook B. Mook B was doing West Side Wednesday when uh, the club 321 was next to Allen Temple. You, you know, know, I'm Mook from B Allen come Temple. Up in Mo interview. I got I'm just interview. saying, shout it. You cannot take that from <laughs> shout it. Me and him does not get along. We love each other, but we don't get along all the time. But you can't take that away from that man. That man a part of this soil. Yes, sir. He's a very part of the song. He's a part of it. You can't take that from that man. Yes, sir. Shout out Moby. I, Shout I, out to Moby. I think Fable done mentioned him. Parlay done mentioned him. You cannot him. not say ho. You can't act like it. I remember yes, the sir. man label was Black ID. Come on. <laughs> like that. How Come far on. I go back yeah. with the man. Like, you can't tell me. Shout out to Moot B, man. Shout out to Moot B, man. D4L. So, so, so in, those, in, those, in, those, in those early days or whatever, you know what I'm saying, you rap, you on the west side doing your thing, and you, you get an opportunity to rap for the likes of Charlie Lowe's and things of that nature. And right, right. You know, when, when did you ever get your, what, what, what would you call your big break as far as getting into the rap game? Well, well, when when my big break came, it wasn't even no Shawty Low yet. Mm. It was just Carlo Walker. Come on. It wasn't even no shout low yet. It was just Carlo Walker. And my big break came when Carlo Walker, he was sort of invested in what Franchise Boy had going on at the time because it was on some street shit. All of it came from street shit, street money and all, everything. That's how the shit was orchestrated. Mm. Pale was in the street. I was in the street. The other members was doing whatever it was that they was doing. You know what I'm saying? But it was all manifested on some street shit. Yes, sir. Listen to the hook, the first hit. It was a money song, then it was a slang in my white tee. You know what I'm saying? And it manifested from that. So Shorty Low was like one of the people invested. And for people like Universal, Dame Dash, and all these people to be interested, and one of the biggest richest drug dealers on the west side trying to tap into what we doing, like really, like this man don't even need the money. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's when my big break came because I'm 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 fucking this money up. I'm fucking this money and I'm fucking these bitches and I'm fucking this money. I'm fucking these bitches. <laughs> well, well, um, tell me tell me about that studio session for White T. Well, actually, um, my arm was broke. My arm was broke when White T got recorded. That why I don't have a verse song. I'm just on the chorus. Mm-hmm. My arm was broke, so I don't know because I had I was in the street and I knocked out a junkie that didn't pay me. That's what happened. <laughs> I'm telling you what happened. I'm, I'm, I'm God. I, I shots out to Jackie Mike. That's who it was. Yeah. I tell you the truth. It, 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 no cap in my rap. That's what was going on. 
So the fellas had did it, but you already know it wasn't nobody had the concept for it. And Pale, you know, he, he put the hook together or whatever. And then we, as we came together as a whole, it became something as a masterpiece. Yes, sir. No, nah, no, nah, it was a uh, culture, culture shifting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know yes, saying? brother. Uh, yes, brother. I remember, uh, I remember foot action, foot locking. Yeah. Uh, changing the way they, 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 uh, they sold their t-shirts. They came out with right, the tall right, tees. Right. Remember the tall tees that came with the with the red stickle. I do remember. Because y'all, did y'all get a check from that? Look, let's talk about that. Look, do you know? Foot Locker or no one else wouldn't endorse us on that. I mean, even with Nelly, because, you know, we, at, at the first deal with White T, we was over there at Universal. You know, oh. Nelly was over there. He had the Air Force One. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't endorse Nelly. So they wouldn't endorse us either on the White T. And get what they told us? Same shit. They just, they just told Nelly. And at the time, Nelly, what? He diamond at the time. We just ghetto gold in. Yeah, 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 yeah. They tell this man, so what you going to do? Pull your hit record off the shelf because we ain't going to give you no endorsement. <laughs> I ain't pushing that what them folks said, bro. All right, bro. Ass hand on the one the member, man. Them folks told us, so what y'all going to turn your record off because we won't get y'all endorsement on some white tea? What, what wow. you going to do? And they still selling you bundles on. Tall tees they sold back in them days, bro. Yeah. You know how many tall Because, you know, it, it, it came from it came from y'all. Yeah. You know, to be, to be all the way hunted, it came from seeing franchise. But I'm still doing this shit. Video, I'm still with the white tee on. The white <laughs> I'm still with this shit on. I just be naked and check it now. You know what I'm saying? You know, you got a little Gucci on top of it now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, top. Pimp had Versace on his t-shirt now. <laughs> Pimp got Versace on on them all, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Shouts out, man. Now, Shouts um, out. For anybody that didn't know, uh, you know, R.I.P. buddy. You know what I'm saying? My brother, I never forget you. Let's, let's, let's talk about Buddy, man, for those that didn't know what kind of person he was, man. You know what oh, I mean? man. Buddy is my brother. I love him to death, but Buddy was Charlie Sheen crazy in real life. <laughs> That's my brother. I love him. I, I shout out to his wife, his son. I love y'all still. I'm still that phone call away. But bro was crazy like that for real. Like he got a song where he say hop out, flip out, watch me try to she flip. And he was that crazy in real life. But buddy was the best nigga, good hearted nigga, very intelligent, had a 4.0 or 4.4 in college or some wow. shit like that. Like, man, Shawty was a smart ass nigga. He wasn't no dumb nigga. He had plenty hard. And but Shawty, bro was crazy. My bro was crazy. I'm talking about dead for real. This man known enough for over 20 years, man. The man was crazy. That's my brother, though. I love him to death to this day. Buddy. He's still in my prayers every single time I pray. Yes, sir. Long live, buddy. Now, um, I, I, had, I had an opportunity to talk to Paul and I had an opportunity to talk to Pimpy. Oh. Now, they was in college. They were. It, 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 you know, they spent some time in college. Right. Jizzle uh, didn't go to college, did he? Jizzle was in the street. They should have told you that too. They didn't oh, tell oh, you no, that. Oh no, they, they did. I was just making sure. Uh, oh, okay, oh, you know, okay. Tell your whole side of the thing. Uh, yeah. Tell me about the difference between the streets and the industry. For those that don't know, it has its similarities. Mm -hmm. Cause a lot of shit be fake. It has its similarity because some of the shit get handled a certain way and some shit don't. Like. It has its similarities. That's why I be in and out of I'm in the streets and I'm in the industry. Like, it's just now I know how to adjust the both of them versus being a young millionaire not knowing and, you know, carrying on and dealing with things as if, you know, I'm in the street. A lot of folks scared of that shit. Mm. What, uh, what are you more fond of? As far as what? As far as if, if you could spend the rest of your life doing one thing, would you stay in the streets or would you stay in the industry? I ain't going to lie. I would stay in the industry, but it's always going to be street. <laughs> <laughs> you can't pull that nigga out of the street. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm being myself, dog. Yes, it's no front or nothing. This is just what it is. Like what you see is what you get. For, 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 those, for those people... That uh, for those rappers oh, that uh, that got one leg in and one leg out. Any kind of advice for those ones that's up and coming? You being an OG, you 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 being a person that has that had mastered both worlds. What advice would I give someone who's in the streets and in the industry? I mean, I I be real with them and I tell them you can't do both of them. Thank you. You can't do both of them, boy. You're going to have to adjust, boy, because I'm telling you, boy. 
You you try to mix the two, man. You gonna deal yourself a bad hand and get sacked. <laughs> you gonna, that's real. You gonna deal yourself a bad hand and get sacked. And trust me, I ain't just talking from something I saw. I'm talking from experience, my G. Yeah. We tried it. A few times. <laughs> yeah, a few times we tried. I had the pack before I had that van money, just on. wouldn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, cause I, I just always remember one one uh the notorious movie, the notorious big movie, and I remember Puff telling Big he gotta leave the streets alone. You know what I'm saying? I remember Polly and Mont B telling me that. Yeah. Nigga, we was on the radio, YT was scorching motherfucking hot. Polly called my phone. He like, where you at? I said, I'm in Elther Red. He said, what the hell you doing at three? I said, shit, I came up on a few zips of goddamn Dro. That when Dro and all this shit was just really kind of first hitting the surface. Mm-hmm. And I said, shit, bro. Shit, I'm trying to get all this shit. Ooh. He said, man, hell no. Nah. I said, yeah, hell I am, bro. Nigga, shit, bro. Nigga, I, what? What? Like... He was like, nigga, hell no, nah, nigga, what the fuck? You, I finna come get your ass, nigga. Ooh, I was in Elther Ridge, I'll never forget. I remember the chick name I messed with. I wanted, yeah. I won't say your name now. <laughs> but, <laughs> and everything, well, I was out there with, rolled out there with and everything. But I remember him and Mook B doing that. And then it was a certain situation that came about because Mook B was slick managing us, road managing us or whatever at the time. And I remember him telling somebody when we had a sit down meeting, he was like, you know, I just got this one out of the street from hustling to do this, so this got to go on. This, mm. like, yeah, I remember Mook be saying that. And I remember that they probably called my phone and I was in Elther Real. I had came up on a couple ounces of drawer, or whatever that shit was, mm. when that shit first hit the surface. And yeah, we yeah, also, <laughs> yeah, I can relate. Had to go get jizzle out the street. <laughs> That, that seemed like it was a common thing we had to do something. Yeah. We had to do it for Pilate too? <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah, we, had to, we had to go that find that said. nigga in my home. That's what he said. Yeah, we had, man, that nigga go out the back door on you, everything. You go pick him up in my home. He out there trap. He working good too. Because they used to swap us out. One day he be in Ellen Tillman. I'm in my home. I'm in my home. Like his OG used to swap out my OG with each other with bodies. Yes, they got me and they got him. Yes, sir. Yeah, that nigga go out the back door. You gonna pick this nigga up for the show shit. He talking about our first show, 3,500. Shout out to them beating that in the trap. Like, like, he ain't thinking about going to split. He finna go split 3,500 with three other niggas. But he, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, shout out go out the back door. He go, all right, I finna go sit this shit down right quick. Go out the back door, yo, on the other side trap. You know what he know? He just fuck it, man. We finna go. Uh, <laughs> let, we got to the point where we start going in the house with the nigga. Nah, we make sure you say, come on. Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. But it was it was like that for both of us, me and Pale both. We was the most yeah. That was which people know and pretty much can still yeah. see that. Yeah. <laughs> Without saying too much, uh let's let us let us talk Shorty Low for a second, man. Uh Shorty Low is a pillar not only in hip hop but in Atlanta as well. You know what I'm saying? Throughout absolutely, the world. absolutely. But, uh, Rest but, uh, in P Low. You 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 got to grow up around the man. You know, you got to see the man before he was. As the world knows, it's Shawty Lowe. You know Carlos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to me about Carlos and his impact on your career and the West Side. I mean, Shawty was a good dude. Like, Lowe was a good guy. Lowe was a good guy. He was that phone call. But, you know, Lowe was like like a real, like, live Atlanta West Side Nicky Buns. Minus the snitching part. But, you know what I'm saying? Shawty was, Shawty was that guy for real. His story is real. His legacy is real. And... I can't say nothing bad about him, shit. You know what I'm saying? Shout it, did things for me that he really didn't have to do. That's crazy. My next question. Who the hell started the damn dance, man? Can we, can we Who started the dance? Can we lay this to rest, man? Are we, we re- that's the question we're going to ask here today? You want to ask that question, man. That's Are crazy. you serious? That's the question folk want to know. Okay, and, and who is the, who, like, you, okay, you saying who started the who dance? Who started the snap? I'm saying, listen, listen. Okay. You saying who started the dance? Between who? Between y'all and D4L? Who, 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 who in D4L? We talking about, I, I guess, Fabo. I'm saying, no, who in D4L? Fabo. I'm talking about against who? Who? I would think all of you got. Oh, so franchise of D4L. Mm-hmm. So that's what you saying? I'm asking. Who you heard of her? Franchise. There it is. Do I have to say anything <laughs> more here? He answered that very smoothly. That was, that, was, that was smooth. That was smooth right now. He, he must have had that ready to go. <laughs> uh, let's let's talk about the snap movement as a whole, though. Um, it shook the world. It came in, and and you had people from Idaho to Indiana snapping to some damn music. 
You know what I'm saying? Um, did you ever see it becoming the crazy and the phenomenon that it became? No, nah, because we were doing it. Like, we weren't doing it for that. It was it was a hobby, and we, like, back then, like, we was just making music for the West Side, for pool palace and shit like that. So, no, nah, we didn't expect it to do what it did, but it did what it did, you know. We didn't, no, nah, we didn't expect that at all. Definitely a legendary run. Definitely some legendary things, man. Um, let's talk to Pool Palace. That was such a legendary place being, uh, being known as a pillar on the West Side. I remember seeing videos of y'all on top of the Pool Palace. And, you know, and, and, and it was crazy because being from another city, you would think that the Pool Palace was the Ritz. You would literally think the Pool Palace was goddamn, you know, like the biggest. The most extravagant club in the world, right. and then and then you know it really was a, a, a staple. Maybe uh, tell me, talk talk to me about uh, Pooh Palace being uh, how how pivotal it was in a lot of people's careers out there. Actually, the Pooh Palace was everybody's career on the west side that you can heard of. Like shout out to DJ T Rock, like that's who broke in by the record. Like if your record was on the came through the west side through the Pooh Palace, you got a hit. Like Shot Boys. Uh, Baker Roll, uh, Classified, Us, D4L, like, and it's a, it's a long list of the restaurants that came straight out the pool palace. Uh, what what what's, what's my partner don't name? Mailbox Boys. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like you came out the pool palace, you had a hit. No respect, respect, respect. Now, um, this is the Ugly Money Podcast, and we salute the process of success, meaning everything between your first dollar and your first million. That is what we call ugly money. Uh, I know there were some times in your career where things didn't seem like they was going right. I know there were some times in your career where the door seemed like it was shut on you and people told you no. I know there were times in your career like, shit, you don't know how you can get up out of this situation. There was times that you fell down and you had to get back up. Can you tell me about one of them instances and how you got back up after you fell down? Well, like, like first I had to re... I had to re... Uh, Re, re reconstruct like the people that was around me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I had to reconstruct that. Then I had to get in tact with my spirituality. Then I had health issues. Then I dealt with a lot of financial stress. Then I was dealing with a lot of legal stuff. Like I'm on the run and everything. I'm getting locked up at shows and everything. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like I had all that going on. So it took a lot of prayer and a lot of things. It was like for a whole year, so it was hospital jail, hospital jail, hospital jail. Straight up, so I'll tell you, I ain't popping. It's all real. Mm. You know what I'm saying? How does someone get having to go through those things back and forth? How do you keep going? How do you keep moving? Because that's really the lesson. Yeah, yeah. Like like I said, I had to reconstruct. This the people that was around me and moved different, get into it with my spirituality and all those things and them burdens that was hanging over me. Come on. I had to, you know what I'm saying, get them, like, like how Rocco say, settle your ties completely. You know what I'm saying? I had to settle some ties completely. You know what I'm saying? And I had to forgive, forget some shit that I know that I didn't even want. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real. Hmm. Forgive. Yeah. Tough word. Yeah, I know, and I ain't a forgiving guy. That's a big word. I ain't a forgiving guy, and I'm an unforgettable dude too. Yes, sir. Yeah. You ain't gonna forget shit. Hell no, nah, I'm like a. That's why I love dogs so much. Like I'm like a pit bull, bro. I'm forgetting ain't nobody do or say to me. Mm. I used to be just bad with dealing with it because I had to get your ass back, and you had to know it. <laughs> Let's talk about forgiveness, bro. That, that's the real word you said. How does the street nigga learn how to forgive? Ooh, experience. Experience and lessons learned and lessons taught. Like, that, that's how a street nigga learn how to forgive. When he see that he wants to last. You know what I'm saying? He want to last. He want to last. He want to still be here to still do this shit, man. Nigga want to be like Jay Prince, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? I want to be like Scarface. I'm the bun B of this shit. I'm the Jada kid down south of this shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm the Fresh Prince of Allen Temple. Come on. Come you know what I'm on. saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah. So the longevity aspect of whatever sometimes is, 
it, it, it might be a hard pill to swallow, but sometimes it's cool to turn the other cheek. Yeah, because everybody don't have to be fought, and I had to learn that the hard way as well. Doing some days, I still have to learn that. You know, and that's why I got a team like yeah. Money Sauce. You know, Money Sauce. Yeah, Money Boy. Yeah, <laughs> 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 all that. Yeah, all that. Yeah. Okay. So you know, what I'm saying just by having a good team and being able to listen to somebody. You know what I'm saying? Because you're gonna have to listen to somebody. Somebody gonna have to calm your ass down. You know what I'm saying? Cause Nigga deserve a chicken sometime, you know what I'm saying? And I admit, you know what I'm saying? I'm one of them niggas that might need it. <laughs> it's out of love, though, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, but I, I can only respect it coming from certain people now. Yes, sir. Because you're a hypocrite. I don't want to hear shit you're talking about. Damn right. And you're a fuck nigga or a fake nigga or you're a rat ass yeah, nigga. Man. I don't want to hear what you're talking really about. I don't want to talk to you at all. Exactly. There it is. Yeah. See? And that's, that's what they're afraid of in this game. <laughs> they're afraid of a nigga who said, I said. And they know it. Hey man, you got some uh, some new music dropping. I see you just dropped a new a new music video, man. Talk about some of this new music. We yeah, got. I got all the talk my shit video. Why feature it's sauce the gun money sauce? Yeah, money boy. <laughs> it's doing it's doing real good on Spotify right now. I appreciate everybody been supporting, been hitting them screen, doing your thing for me and my team to live our dream. Yes, sir. Under D and all, uh, we just dropped that touch me video shot by my dude shot. You know what I'm talking about? Hold oh, what shot. you got, my boy shot is shot for shot. Man, can, hey man, hey man, shoot letters off a can and want me. Come yeah, on. <laughs> <laughs> that's my guy. What yeah. keep you going after all this time, bro? Man, the love, love for it, it. the love, love for it, it, man. Like I said, I've been doing this since I was nine years old. Like I've been doing this for a long time. Like that's why it bothers me when. These little young niggas be they they I like I like a lot of them, don't get me wrong. I like a lot of them, but when they go to rapping and stealing my shit, I don't like no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm I'm flattered by it. Like I appreciate like how Young Thug and Travis Scott redid the yes. white tea thing. That was that was that was paid homage and them. They got the guys actually reached out throughout the process of them making the record, shooting the video, you know what I'm saying? So that's always cause I do it. I borrow. Yeah. I'm not giving it back, but I borrowed, <laughs> <laughs> I borrowed yeah. from my OG. That was so. definitely one thing I wanted to talk about was, uh, you know, Young Thug and Travis Scott coming out, you know, the remake of the white. Right, know, right, 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 right. Or whatever, and, and, and seeing if, uh, you know, if that, was, if, that was, if that was good with you. Right, you know, right. Yeah, yeah, it was all love. They reached out and everything, man. And, and I'm one of the guys who watch, you know, Young Thug throughout his stage of yeah. becoming the thugger. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I, I watched him like he used to run with my little cousin. Them, know what I'm saying? Like I watched him like, and Shouter was great then. Shouter was fight in. Yeah. He just uh, he starts seeing most stuff in life, and you know how it just it just comes out like that. And then he become to be something great, like what Shouter them became to be today. Man, Shouter is Shouter is is the new hip hop male rap version of Prince. Come on. People keep talking about, oh, shout this, shout No, he's no. not. The man's a gangster, man. The man yeah. is fucking with y'all, and y'all buying into the yeah. shit. The man is the new prince. Ain't nothing sweet about that. Prince got all the bitches. Prince had all the bitches. All the cars, the money, the bitches. Prince had them. Man, come on, man. You can't tell. I told them folk when he first started, he was doing a... I said, man, shout is fucking with y'all, man. The man's a damn gangster. He, he is prince. He's pimping. He's pimping his bitch. She in there frying eggs. I'm coming. Thug like, I mean, I mean, and the bitch coming. You know? He's he pimping his bitch. He yeah. prince her. That's what I can say about it. Shouts out to Yeah. Hey, man. Okay, I'm, I'm, before we get out of here, I got to get you in some trouble. Just a little bit. See how you ask this question. Jizzles. Top five. West Side Atlanta rappers, in no particular order. Mm. West Side Atlanta rappers, old or new? All time. All time. Well, uh, <laughs> me of course. Okay, there you go. <laughs> me, me. Okay. I I I I love Kilo. Kilo still. Yeah. Kilo. Kilo. I got to say Kilo. Um. Uh, on the West Side, they got it from on the West Side. Mm -hmm. The West Side. Uh. Well, I, I I got to say, oh yeah, stunts nice, stunts nice, stunt nice, lay nice, lay, yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely lay, lay's nice. Oh, uh, shit, I like she, I like she. 
Okay. Shot boys. I like she. She be she be slept on. You know what I'm saying? And and and, and, and me, of course. <laughs> me. You can't forget that part. Nah, man, come on. Nigga, bring your best 16 and bring your checkbook after I do the hook. That's what it is. I stand on it. Niggas know what it is over here. Like, nigga, me. Like I said, me. Yes, and I got that statement there from Sammy Sam, too. Shouts out to Hitman yes, Sammy Sam, free him. Yes, sir. You understand? I got that from him, too. Hitman Sammy Sam. Yeah, they were asking. We was at some little convention shit out with Sammy Sam one day. And they were like, yeah, who the hard? And matter of fact, T.I. was the person who was speaking on the mic. Okay. Sam and Sam in the crowd. I'm over there with Sam. Hmm. Yeah. The hardest thing come out the A since. And Sam said, since me. Since me. Till said, we're going to get to you in a minute, hit man. <laughs> I, I can't yeah, make this yeah. shit up. I can't make that. So I got it for me. Since me. So there it is. Give me a... Uh, <laughs> Give me a uh, give me a, give me a hitman Sammy Sam story. A hitman Sammy yes, Sam story. Free oh real. my god! I know you got. We sit we sit in Mechanicville one time on the steps. Man, it's hot out there. Mm -hmm. I don't mean for the temperature. The police are rolling and they scrolling. You heard me. We sitting on the step. <laughs> Sam is a character. If people <laughs> don't know who the hitman Sam is, crazy. So they riding around in squad car. Well, not really squad car, but unmarked car. But you know them little detective car. They riding around in them motherfuckers. One walks up. They pulled out and stop. We thinking they particularly coming at us. Sam and Sam just get up and act like he got a walker talking to take off. <laughs> and just take off running. Boy, that shit was so funny. Them folks just standing there just looking at them like that. And I couldn't even move or run or nothing because it was so... But the shit was funny as fuck. Then after they get back in the car, he come back and sit back on the step like he ain't do nothing. Free <laughs> <laughs> real, man. Free real. Hit man, Sam, man, motherfucking Sam, man. That's my guy. Now, the West Side has a rich history of, of, of just musical powerhouses, man. And uh, you, you guys definitely have your place cemented. And not only on the West Side, but across the world, man. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's definitely it's definitely a dope place. You know, I, I just grew up listening to y'all. So it's just dope for me to even have the opportunity to, you know, just, just to talk to you, man. Before we get out of here, let these folk know what they can expect from you in the future, what they need to be looking out for, and how they can follow you. Uh, well, what you need to be looking for is this Talk My Shit project. As well as my cooking show, Lean in the Pot with it, just Come on. ghetto gourmet. What, yeah. Say that one more time for me. Uh, my cooking show, Lean in the Pot with it, just ghetto gourmet. Yeah, that's what it is. Man. You can go on my pages. I'm Jizzle, the Jizzle's Ghetto Gourmet, or the man Jizzle Page, M I N J I Z Z A L on Instagram, and who I am. Yes, sir. Yeah, that yeah. Is, man. I, I love the growth, brother. I love the growth. I love yeah. the longevity. Uh, you are definitely a testament to that. Yeah, yeah believe that. The, uh, the marathon and not the race. You still here looking good, bro. Trying to, you know, man. Trying to. Oh, trying to. Man, trying to. Trying to. Man, trying to. Trying to. Follow me at Ugly Money Nietzsche. That's Ugly Money N I C H E. Remember, the bigger the dream, the bigger the risk, the bigger the payoff. This has been the Ugly Money Podcast. My brother Jizzle, franchise boy. Salute. Jizzle.